Hey everyone, it's Kenji. Uh, tomorrow is pizza night, which means that today is dough night. Oh, actually, <laughs> before we make my dough, let me show you my book. This is the book I'm, uh, my book that's coming out in September. It's called Every Night is Pizza Night. Um, it's written by me and it's illustrated by Gianna Ruggiero. And that's supposed to be my daughter-ish, maybe. Um, and there's a little dog who's on every page. It's about a girl who loves pizza um, and then learns to love other foods as well. Um, anyhow, out in September, I think it's great. My daughter loves it, uh, and she would have pizza every night if she could. Um, I would have it every night if I could also, but um, but I can't because of obvious reasons. Anyhow, um, <clears throat> so we're making dough tonight. Uh, I think the pizza we're going to make tomorrow is going to be sort of a New York-style pizza. Um, oh, by the way, you can pre-order this book. Um, if you go to bookshop.org slash shop slash Kenji Lopez Alt, you can pre-order this book. Um, and if you order it from that site, a hundred percent of my sales commission from the site will go to, um, creating these boxed meals that, uh, we're serving to, uh, hospital workers and community centers around the Bay area. So, um, it's a good time to buy it, a good place to buy it. Um, all right. End of plug for my own book. Um, so we're making a no need dough. Um, tomorrow's going to be sort of a New York style pizza, New York ish. Um, I'm going to make the dough and I'm going to bake it in the outdoor pizza oven. Um, <clears throat> so that it'll get nice and hot. Um, this dough we're going to do start with 300 grams. This is, um, so this is the Caputo double O pizzeria flour, which is like a relatively high protein flour. You can use regular bread flour if you want. You can even use all purpose flour. It'll work just fine. Um, the texture will just come out a little bit different. Um, but this, this is some pretty nice flour. I get it. Um, I just buy it online and it gets shipped here in like five pound bags, I think. Five pound that bag will last me a long time. All right. So 300 grams of flour. Um, for those of you who are keeping track of baker's percentages, um, we're going to do, um, 3% salt. This time I'm going to do it right. Um, so 3% of 300 grams is 9 grams of salt. As opposed to my last pizza video where I did it wrong. Or my no-need bread video where I did it wrong. All right, 9 grams of salt. We're going to zero off the scale again. By the way, if you don't have a scale um, you're make, and you bake any amount, you're making your life much more difficult. First of all, um, teaspoons and cup measures are very imprecise. Um, a scale is more precise. Um, but more importantly, it saves you from having to dirty everything up because all you have to do is re-tear the scale every time you um, add a new ingredient and then just add the next one straight to the bowl. So we're going with about 1% yeast. This is a instant yeast. You can use regular old, ye any kind of yeast you want really. Um, and you don't actually have to be too precise about the amount of yeast because it kind of kind of self-regulates. It kind of, you know, eats and eats and eats until it can't eat anymore. Um, and the, the acidity and the alcohol level was kind of slow it down. So it kind of self-regulates. So you don't really have to worry too much about the amount of yeast. Um, so 1% yeast, and we're going to mix it up. Those are our dry ingredients. Well, you know what? This is a, this is a New York style pizza. So I'm going to add just a touch, a touch of oh, sugar, which is not a necessary, but a, oh no, you know what I was going to do? I was going to try using some agave nectar this time because I've never tried it in pizza dough before, but, um, so I figured I would. So I'm going to do like maybe 2% of this. There we go. Yeah, just a little touch. Um, and then some olive oil for this one. So a more traditional Neapolitan style dough would not have any, um, fat added to it. It would just be, and or sugar, it would just be flour, salt, water, and yeast. Um, this is kind of, this is a slightly softer New York style dough. I'm going to go about 3% oil as well. Close enough. All right. And next what we do is, uh, about 66, 66% hydration. So I'm going to add 200 grams of water. we go and now all we got to do is mix this all together um, so this is a no knead dough which means you don't really have to knead it um, you basically just want to mix it together until the until there's not really any dry flour left there you go and that's about it get the stuff off clean stuff off the sides 
clean off the sides with the dough ball. And just make it makes it a little bit more because it, I see some oil spots. But all right, there we go. Good enough. So now we're just going to leave that. Um, and what's going to happen is that over the course of the night, um, and I explained this in my no need bread video as well, but over the course of the night, what happens is there's enzymes in the flour that will break down um, some of the longer protein strands um, and make it easier for them to recombine into gluten. Uh, gluten is the network of proteins that forms when you combine uh, flour with water. Um, and it's what gives bread structure and what's makes, you know, what makes a pizza able to have those sort of large bubbles um, of stretchy dough. So what happens is the uh, enzymes break down the longer protein pieces, which are then more easily able to combine into gluten. Um, and because they're so broken down so much, just the mere action of the yeast working, so like the little bubbles and stuff um, coming up and around and through the dough, uh, bubbling up, that action itself is what actually ends up kneading the dough. Um, so it kind of kneads on a microscopic level um, and you just give it a plenty of time. So, you know, tomorrow I'm putting this here now. Uh, right now it's what time? Uh, 9.15 p.m. Um, tomorrow morning when I wake up and I'm making breakfast, I'll probably come and give it a few turns uh, to help develop the gluten a little bit, cover it up again. Um, and then uh, finally about two hours before uh, I'm ready to bake it, I'll shape it into a ball. Um, and then let it sit one last time before stretching it. Uh, so you'll see all that tomorrow. So, all right, when I snap my fingers, it's going to be... 10, 15 a.m., uh, 11 hours later. So here is what we got now. Oops, stuck a little bit. I haven't opened this yet. Okay, so you can see the dough has kind of puffed up and risen out, and you can see all these little bubbles, and that's what you're looking for. So now all you got to do right now, or all I'm going to do is kind of very gently pick it up and kind of fold it over itself. And what you're doing here is you're kind of, um, so first of all, you're gonna notice it's a really wet dough um, and that's expected, wet and sticky. If you hold it, if you handle it for more than like a, you know, like a split second at a time, it's going to stick to your fingers. Um, and that's something that you kind of just have to practice doing. Um, but what we're doing, gonna do is pull it over itself a few times and that's going to sort of stretch the gluten a little bit. It's going to reintroduce some yeast to some new food pockets. Um, and now we're just gonna let it sit until the afternoon. All right, and I will see you now in, I will see you now at what time? In four o'clock, uh, so about six hours later, not quite. It doesn't really matter how long you wait, um, just a little bit of time, you know, as long as it's like an hour or so. Um, what you wanna do is so two hours before you're baking it, so I'm gonna bake this around six o'clock. Um, so two hours or so before you bake it, like between an hour and a half to two and a half hours, you wanna give it a sort of final shaping. So a little dust of flour on top, a little dust of flour on your board, Wooden board's good for this. You know, a countertop will work, but it, a wooden board is better because it won't stick very much to a wooden board at all. So you need less flour. Um, more flour in my hands. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna basically fold this into itself like that. And again, you wanna work kind of quickly with a wet dough like this, okay? A little more flour. Okay, and so now we kinda bunch it up on the bottom. You can sort of see how I'm like kind of pinching it with my thumb down here and making a little seam and that's it. And then you can do a little roll around like this. Um, and this part you actually want it to stick to the board just a little bit so that it kind of seals itself off at the bottom. If you see any big bubbles like that, you can pop them. And that's about it. So now, the last thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put it back in this bowl. In a smaller bowl this time is fine. Uh, 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 let's cover it with this. Ooh, that's not gonna stay. This way. All right. So let it sit covered for its final rise. Um, meanwhile, I'm, I'm going to um, I'm just gonna get the rest of the ingredients together for the toppings. This is just canned whole peeled tomatoes that I've squished around with my fingers. Um, that's about enough for this sort of largest, largest pizza. Um, I'm gonna also get, this is a aged mozzarella cheese, so the kind that you buy in blocks at the deli. Um, full fat, normally I don't get um, 
pre-shredded mozzarella because it's almost always low-fat mo mozzarella, which is not right for this kind of pizza. It just doesn't melt right. Um, it also has cellulose on it that's done to prevent clumping, um, and that affects the way it melts. So you want to go for a full-fat mozzarella. So you can usually get that at the deli department where they slice it. Um, this was, I think, was just like a block of boar's head. So I'm going to slice up some pancetta, nice and thin so that it cooks in the time that the pizza cooks. Um, so I'm going to do this pretty hot, so it's going to cook under, hopefully under four minutes or so, three to four minutes, um, which is about what you're aiming for with a New York style pizza. You know, at pizza like slice shops, the corner shops that use get de gas de deck ovens that hit maybe 500 degrees or so, um, oftentimes a pizza will take six or seven minutes to bake. Um, sometimes, at, you know, at the at the sort of nicer places, the old school places, especially the coal-fired places, um, they'll bake much faster, so like four to five minutes, maybe even three minutes, as opposed to a Neapolitan pizza, which bakes in like 90 seconds. Um, and generally, like, you know, it's possible, of course, to make good pizza using, um, with, a, with a longer bake. Um, I think my own New York style pizza recipe that calls for a regular oven, uh, the pizza bakes for like seven to 12 minutes. Oop. Clean that up, clean that up later. Clean uh, seven to 12 minutes or something like that. <clears throat> Whereas, um, uh, cooks in seven to 12 minutes. And that's just because the d dough is designed to be able to work in a home oven like that. Um, but a Neapolitan pizza will bake in much less time. So 90 seconds. Um, and when, when you bake at a lower, t uh, when you bake at a higher temperature for a shorter amount of time, what you end up with is more of a sort of, um, very thin crust um, with the leopard spots, like hi a higher a higher contrast between the dark spots and the light spots, um, and a very very thin crispy shell with kind of a poofy moist interior. Whereas um, a longer bake time will get you something that's a little more um, evenly browned um, and more sort of crunchy and a little drier. Um, so you know, it, there's no right or wrong answer to to that. Um, it's really just a matter of what you want. This is Spanish chorizo, so um, the good stuff. So this is you know similar to pepperoni. Um, which you would put on a pizza, uh, you know, American style pepperoni, um, in that it's, uh, you know, garlicky and has chilies, um, and it's done importantly in a natural casing, which I just peeled off. Um, if you go to serious eats, I have this article, I think one of my favorite articles that I've ever written about why, um, pepperoni, why some of it curls and some of it doesn't. Um, it's a pretty fascinating, um, answer. I thought, you know, I always assumed that was maybe because the edges, um, shrink more, like the, the natural casing shrinks more, and so that causes the causes it to cup up like that. Or maybe it's because um, the top of the pepperoni cooks faster than the bottom, so it shrinks more, and that causes it to curl up as a baking on a pizza. Um, but in fact, the reason it does is because um, the it's the it has to do with the ratio of the um, the nozzle that they use to fill the casings um, with the uh, radius of the um, with the diameter of the actual casing. So. Usually the nozzle is about that big, whereas the casing stretches out to about you know, this size, coin size, quarter sized. Um, and because of that, um, what happens is as the meat gets pumped in, um, the edges kind of the edges of the meat kind of stick to the casing while the inside gets pushed down more. So it ends up with this kind of natural U shape that you can see if you split. Um, here, let me take up a chunk and I'll split it um, lengthwise. So you can see on this one how the inside of it is de is more densely packed than the outside and it has this kind of U-shaped, um, in some sausages it's more obvious than others, but I, I think you can see it here. I don't know, can you see it? I can see it. Um, it gets this U-shaped thing where the inside is more dense than the outside. Um, so as it cooks, um, it shrinks unevenly um, and that's what causes that, uh, that's what causes pepperoni to cup up like that. Um, so if you want cuppy pepperoni, uh, get go for stuff with a natural casing. Um, Boar's Head, I think, is available all around the country, um, and it's great. Um, if not, you can also, my, my favorite, favorite pepperoni comes from uh, Vermont Smoke and Cure. You can order it online, um, and it comes in, comes in sticks, and you just slice it yourself. Um, at pizzerias, they frequently use a brand called Ezzo, E-Z-Z-O. That one's also great. I don't know if you can buy it retail, but you can certainly find it online. Mm. Love Spanish so I'm good. All right, so the pizza's gonna rise for another two hours. This stuff is gonna hang out and wait until we're ready to bake. Um, about 45 minutes before we bake, I'm gonna go out and start preheating the oven. Um, so I will join you back in. Now it's been about two hours um, and we're gonna get ready to bake. 
Um, all right, so here's my dough. The um, the oven's been preheating. I've been preheating it on high for um, about an hour or so. So now I'm going to turn it back down to. This is a Unicoda, by the way. This is currently my favorite pizza oven. Um, down here are some of my other favorites. Um, this is a rock box, very great oven. Um, it has a 12 inch limit. This one's a 16 inch oven uh, limit up here. Um, I also have the Uni 3 over there somewhere. Um, but outdoor pizza ovens are great. Modern ones are really great. Um, so dough you see is nice and uh, nice and soft. We're gonna do a little bit of flour now. So like a normal New York style pizza dough would not have any cornmeal. Um, maybe you would do some semolina at the bottom, but I've actually sort of recently started enjoying the texture that cornmeal adds. This is coarse cornmeal. I think it's actually just polenta. Um, you can use a finer cornmeal if you want something a little bit finer on the bottom of your crust. Little flour on top. Okay. So, I'm gonna start by pressing out a little bit of the excess air. Push it out a little bit. I am by no means like an expert at this. There are people who are much better pizza crust um, stretchers than I am. Oops, that guy got a big hole. That's okay, watch this. And we're all good. No one will even know what happened. You know, one of the good things about pizza is that um, even when it's completely ugly, uh, it's still delicious. And pizza is one of those things where the first few times you do it, um, in, fact, in fact, even, you know, like I've been making pizza for a long, long time, frequently, and it still sometimes comes out ugly, like it's probably going to today, especially because, well, it's probably because I'm on camera, it always happens. So, all right, so we got our dough stretched out here, pretty thin, stretched out nice and easy. Now it doesn't really matter if it's perfectly circular at this point. Um, we are going to, basically we're gonna to top it here and then we're gonna transfer it to a peel and then throw it into the oven. Um, and when you transfer it to the peel, it kind of you can then kind of stretch it out and shape it. Um, but usually you want to, um, yeah, it doesn't really matter what it is at the beginning. As long as it's sort of basically round, it's all right. And then we'll, we'll, we'll put it on the peel, we'll stretch it into the right shape again. Um, and then as we transfer it, you'll see it'll, it'll come out all right. All right, we got our sauce, our cheese. I'm gonna use a metal peel. Um, you can use a wooden peel. So wooden peels are nice because you can usually, um, if you're fast enough, what you can do is you can assemble the pizza directly on the peel um, and then transfer directly to the oven. Um, metal peel is, that, which is what you need if you're going to want to, you know, like a wooden peel, all you can do is transfer it. You can't really maneuver it in the oven once it's in there. Um, so. If you do use a wooden peel, you're also going to need a metal peel um, to be able to subsequently maneuver the pizza around in the oven. Is that chorizo? Um, you can see like half of it's gone because my wife and daughter and myself have been picking at it. Always slice extra chorizo. I am positive that because this is a video, um, this pizza is probably going to get mangled when I put it in the oven. But you know what? I'm making a deal with you right now that no matter what happens to this pizza, this video is going to go up. Because it's good to see when, when people, even you know, like professionals, which I technically am, um, screw up, right? Everybody screws up. Sous chef Eric's pancetta on. Get a little bit of parmesan on. Get a little pinch of salt and a little. Eh, actually, I'm not going to do the olive oil because um, this has a lot of sort of fatty meats on it. All right, so the camera's in the way of how I normally do this, so we're gonna, we're gonna try it this way. So, ready? Ready? This is a very loose feeling dough. Oop, there goes that hole. But like I promised, we're gonna go, we're gonna go ahead with it. <laughs> what a mess. This might be the worst pizza I've ever made in my life. It's probably not, but it, it very well might be. I don't know what happened to this, but well, let's see how it bakes. I bet it's still gonna be still gonna taste fine. We 
We're definitely gonna need some beer. Peel this guy up off the bottom. So they're called pizza peels, right? I think it's gonna be just fine. Oh yeah, that's gonna be great. And the top down a little bit more. Now, what's going to happen is this peel, is the um, the stone, of course, is going to be a mess. Um, but it's fine. You can burn all that stuff off, and then uh, you just get yourself one of these um, grill brushes and scrub it, um, and it'll be just fine. Like every, I guarantee you, every single pizza oven in the world has at some point had a floppy pizza burned onto it. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take that out so I can rescue those bits first. It'll be my daughter's portion. Mm. It's actually really good. Let's try the bottoms. Are. So what we're gonna call this episode is doesn't matter, still pizza. Let's throw these back on there. <laughs> I'd say we're almost done here. A moment. So when you when you get a pizza like this, the secret is if you want to still get a nice beauty shot out of it, there's almost always a couple of slices that are still all right. Ooh. Look at this guy. Should we see what the bottom, bottom underbelly looks like? Ooh. Looks good to me. All right. Not too much. Mm. Hmm. Mm. It's still delicious. We're still gonna have dinner. And we are gonna reshoot this episode at some point where I'll show you an actual good pizza. <laughs> All right, everyone. Thank you for watching. Bye. Okay, so now since I just remembered, Okay, so now since I just remembered that I started this book, um, sorry, that I started this video by plugging my new book, um, I feel like it's actually the perfect ending because at the end of my new book, there's a recipe for pizza. And the main character says this, before you even start, remember, even imperfect pizza is still pizza and pizza is always delicious. And she's right. And now what's really gonna bake your noodle is 
or bake my noodle. What's really gonna bake my noodle is, is would I still have messed up that pizza if I hadn't started by plugging this book? We'll never know.